Hello everyone, my name is Shamba. We hope you all are doing well. Now basically we are going to today see regarding the interdict communication between the threads using the queue. Okay, now we will be using out the queue module and with the help of that module only we will be seeing the interdict communication between the threads. Right, so we had already seen that what is actually interdict communication. Let me again just give you an overview regarding that particular thing that what does this we actually mean from interdict communication. So sometimes one thread, okay, sometimes one thread may be required to communicate to another thread depending on the requirements, right? So this is actually considered as the inter-thread communication. And sometimes one thread uh, may be required to communicate to the other thread, right? So basically some conditions, some requirements actually come in which one thread may be required to communicate to the other one, to the another thread, right? So whenever this condition, the situation actually appears, so that is considered as an inter-thread communication, right? So I hope I just made this thing again clear to you that what you just meant from inter-thread communication. So basically this is building a thread safe priority queue, right? So now we're writing out a program for this particular thing. Fine, let me just proceed on here with this particular thing. So what I would just do here is that I would be first of all importing out my threading model. Okay, I just write here from threading import asterisk. So from my threading module, I am trying to import all of the functions which actually I have into this, right? So from threading import asterisk, threading is my module which I have, asterisk means to import all of the functions which I have in this particular threading module. So this is the very first statement that I have written. Other than that, I'd be using three more modules. The first module would be that we are using the Q function. Q, so in that case, I need to import out the Q module. So I would just write import and this is how the Q goes, right? Import and then the Q, right? This is how it actually goes. So import Q. After that, I have import random module. I have another module, which is the random module. Fine, I just need to import that out. So import random. And at last, I have my very third module, which I want to import and at this time. So these are all of the three modules which I'll be using throughout my program. So that is why I am importing these three here. Okay, so first of all, I have imported all of the functions from my threading module, which I actually have here. Next, I have imported out my queue module because we are going to write out the program for the internet communication between the threads using the queue, right? Then I have imported out my random module and at last I have imported out my time module. Right, right? These are all the things which I have imported. Now I will be making out another thing. Fine. So let's say I will be writing out a blank list here. Okay, Let's say A is a variable and this is one of the blank lists which actually I have made here. Fine. Now I would just not use classes here. I would be simply using out my function. So let's say here def. Okay. Now let's say my def uh, is one of the functions. And into this, let's say I am um, I am writing out some function name and let's say that is marks. Okay, def marks. I will put out the bracket here. Now, and inside this, basically, I would simply be passing out a, uh, let's say, I will simply be passing out a variable. C, let's say. Okay. Put out a colon and come to a new line. Now, here, basically, I will be applying a simple condition that is, oh, that is while, that is while true. Okay, while true is my condition that actually I am applying here. Now inside this, I'd be taking out the blank list. After, okay, not that list. I'd be taking out a module. Let's say that is, oh sorry, variable that is B. Okay, B is one of the variables which actually I have made out here. Now B is equal to, and I'd be using out my random dot randint module. Okay, random dot randint. And let's say I just give it a range as 1 comma 10. Okay, I just give it give uh, this random integer as a range of 1 comma 10 and I am having out my random module here. Right now what I would just do here is that I'd be using out a print statement. Oh, single I like this. Okay, print and inside this print statement I'd be writing that uh, marks, okay, marks obtained are, okay, marks obtained are, Put out a call comma and here I'll be using out the variable that is B in which I have stored my random module and this range that I just want some random integer between this particular range that is 1 to 10. So that I have stored it in the, it in the variable as the B, right? So that same I am using this B variable here. Fine. Now, I would be using here a small Q, Q dot and I would be just using put and inside the bracket I would be writing here B. 
okay now what is this q actually so q is actually one of the variables in which i'll be storing out my q module let me show you how will i be do that so let me just come out here i just let me write out key uh, q is a small q is equal to and here i'll be writing the first of all q dot and from my q module that is q u e u e like this okay and i put out the bracket so this is how and this is what actually this a character that is small q which this actually means right so i just put out this small character here as well and use it with the help of a function that is put actually right come on to a new line and here i'll be printing out that uh marks uh, okay i'll just write here it's a marks are uh, displayed that is okay like this this plate marks are displayed okay i put out this exclamation marks like this so inside the print statement i'd be writing that marks are displayed right and here i'd be writing time dot sleep and into the bracket i'd be putting out the time dot sleep which is let's say here five five means five seconds actually okay so so b is equal to random dot random that i have put out a random integer one comma ten after that i have printed out a statement that is marks obtained are put out a comma and after that i had written out the b then i had used q dot put and little bracket i put out that variable in which i have stored some random integer then coming on to a new line i had printed out a statement that is marks are displayed and simply i put out a time of sleep that is 5 seconds now make sure that whatever the number you are giving here inside the bracket that is automatically taken as a second only okay so the, the values which you are giving inside this these are actually the second value so here i have taken out the time which is 5 seconds and this function is actually completed now i've put new, uh, using out a new function here okay so uh, let's say my new function name is obtain okay put out the bracket and inside this i'll be passing out the same variable which i pass out above and let's say that is c right let me put out the colon and come to a new line so here as well again i'll be putting out the condition that is while and write out here as true while true come on to a new line and use out the print statement so print and i would be just writing that um total let's say the statement is total marks obtained okay total marks obtained fine come on to a new line here and now come on to a new line and here i'll be using out my print statement once again now inside this what i will be writing is that i'll be writing uh marks you got okay marks you got are and after this i'll be putting out a comma and now here i'll be using a function that is get above i had used the put right now here i'll be using the get but the variable will actually remain same that is q dot and here is the get and the bracket like this right so i've just used out this function and simply i would just again put out a time for the sleep and let's say that is again for me as a five second right so q is actually already defined so what i would just do is that let me just come back this side Fine. So this is Q is defined. Now what I would just do is that I would be making out the thread. So let's say my first thread is T1. Okay, let me leave out a line here. T1 is equal to my first thread in the bracket. I would be writing the target. So my target is equal to and what is my function? First function name. So that is um, um, max. But first of all, let's say I just write out here obtained one. Okay, tar target is equal to obtained comma. And what are the arguments? I will just write here args is equal to and I will just pass here q comma. That is the argument which we have passed out here. What about the t2? So t2 is the same. That is thread. Write out here is target and what was my function name? That was actually the marks, right? So that is marks. Not these brackets. Put out a comma here and pass out the arguments. So ar arguments is equal to put out the brackets and write here q comma. Right? That is actually done. Right here t1 dot start and put out the bracket like this after that write down t2 dot start and again put out the brackets like this so t1 dot start will actually help me to start out my thread and t2 dot start will actually again help out to start my t2 thread so we had made out two threads why we had made it out two because we are having two functions right my first function which i am having that is marks and the second function which i am having that is obtained correct so i have just used out two of the functions so in that same case i am making out my two threads let's say in the case i have used out three functions so for the calling of all those three functions i must have made out the third class third function as well right so this is the whole idea this is the whole procedure how we just make out the 
uh, functions, right? I had made out the marks and even I had made out the opt-in one. Now it's the time for running out of my program. So click on the run and here basically my program has been run. So I am getting that total marks obtained first of all. The marks obtained are 4. That is a random value, right? Marks are displayed, marks you got are 4. Total marks obtained, marks obtained are 9. Marks are displayed, marks you got are 9. Now this will actually continue printing me the loop. After it's, it's a uh, type of running out the loop, right? So it will actually start printing me till it, it, till it has printed out all of the numbers from here. Right, so four, five, nine, ten, whatever it is like printing, it it will actually start printing me. Okay, till that particular point. Now I would just close this out here and click on the terminate. Fine. So this is how actually we just use out this Q module, and this is actually how we just use that out into our program for the threading. So this is how we just do out the inter-thread communication between the threads using the Q. Right. So I hope I just made this thing very much clear to you that how you can write out the program for this, right? So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care.